if you want half price, you're going to get a half baked service. And I'm not comfortable doing that. Can I actually help them? And will I enjoy working with them in the first place if they're already going to be like this? If I send them the contract and invoice and they don't fulfill it, they weren't going to be good for me anyway. So like, I usually just trust them to fulfill it. I'm just like, if you're not going to fulfill it on your own, then you probably weren't all in anyway. So that's something that I've done. And that's more of an agency thing, but um, just like detaching from that and just realizing like, if it's not a good client, it's not going to work out anyway. That's kind of what's worked for me the best. Where would you rank yourself from zero to 100? 90. How do you rank business owners or entrepreneurship? There's only one way. It's by how much money you make. It's how many points you accumulated, right? You accumulate points and you get money done. So if you look at the money we've made, we are in the top 10%, 100%. So if you just look at that, you have no choice but to put yourself in that. Now from 90 to 91 and 92 to 93, huge difference from zero to 90, right? Because most business owners fail in general to, they, to just stuck at zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think uh, I think we're at I think we're at ninety. I think you're at I think you're at ninety ninety one. Hi, cool. Well, that was that was actually a deeper analysis for me. It was kind of a, like silly question. You turn it into a good one. Um, that this one, is an, that one you're, friend who overthinks everything. <laughs> no, you're you're the intuitive judging types. We're gonna get into MBTI. MBTI is one hundred percent real friends, and we do believe that we're MBTI respecters in this podcast. What what are you by the way again? I'm an INFP. You're an oh ah uh, there you go. I'm an ISTP for everyone wondering. What does that mean? It's very important, and I learned that because this is actually a good point. So I was reading my manga, right? It was it's a manga about soccer. It's called Blue Look. Very nice. So there's this kid that's really fast. That's what he does. He's just very fast, and that's his skill. The trainer catches him lifting weights at the gym, but like hard hard bodybuilding weights. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm training. He's like, no, no, no. You got you to gotta train on your best weapon because this one's going to kind of kill the other ones because speed is your best weapon. You got to play to your strengths. And I thought, oh, that was really smart. Let me look up my type. And I found out my type. So this is could be woo-woo, but to me, it is very real. So I looked up my type. And I don't know about you, but mine is, it's very rarely a leader and it's very rarely the number one guy. It's never very rarely the Red Power Ranger. I hated the fucking Red Power Ranger. You know why I hated the Red Power Ranger? I hated the Red Power Ranger because everybody else did the heavy work and the Red Power Ranger took all the glory. And I did not like that. I like the Blue Power Ranger because the Blue Power Ranger always cleaned house. He knew what to do. And that's always been kind of my type. I don't like managing people as much as I just like doing the thing, acting, kind of like my... Th thing is never a general it's more like the warrior that's doing the thing and when i understood that my partnership with ryan just got so much better because he got to be the leader i got to be the hulk i just got to be the guy just just did things and i just think it's a very useful exercise to find what your strengths are and i'm a big believer in just do the strengths keep the weaknesses not detrimental don't sharpen it but keep the strengths up and work for me could work for you guys that's pretty good. I think I, I was listening to a, a podcast and you guys said, uh, after a certain threshold, it's really just hiring killers. But I think about it. I'm like, what if, what if you're the killer? <laughs> you need someone to, you need to essentially get someone like Orion for you and then just be the killer. Do you know what I mean? Cause I, I know, not, I, I, I know exactly what it's like. Um, it's like, what if you're the Hulk, right? You'd rather just be smashing things. You need an Iron Man. You know what I mean? Somebody who's like out there like helping you. Not necessarily being your boss, but understand that he's more of a big picture oriented person. And that's fine because you can just do your thing and you'll still win. Yeah. Well, speaking of doing your thing, I've noticed that um, you, do, you do this really well and you actually made a post about it of repurposing the content for the platform. Like you have you'll replace the right words and you'll, you'll change up little things to go on the Instagram and LinkedIn. It's funny because it's something that's talked about pretty thoroughly out in the social sphere, but no one really does it. Maybe it's the resources or the effort required. I'm curious if you can give some insight into like how you think about repurposing it for the different platforms and why you even decided to go in on it because most people know about it, but no one really does it. Yeah, that's a good one. So 
my kind of my birthplace it's always twitter and the sister to twitter will always be linkedin now i think it was tim denning that told me this so shout out tim said you can't just copy and paste your entrepreneurship content into linkedin because people's bosses are watching you don't want the boss to see them liking a post about quit your nine to five doesn't work that way so you might go from break free to build an audience because an audience serves the employer so that's kind of how i think about linkedin make something that the employer would like hey i'm taking this course i'm learning new things so then they can say because i'm using it for the job even if it's too quick it's just kind of an excuse so that's what i use for linkedin when it comes to instagram uh, when it comes to instagram i always try to do hooks all the time like I like to call people out on the first one. Hey, coaches. Hey, coach. Are you a coach? It's just a useful way to get people's attention. And on YouTube, kind of the same thing. Uh, when it comes to shorts, I like to give a, I like to think of myself like as a kind of as a drug dealer. I will give a little tactics that work in a very specific context, but don't work all the time. But people love that shit. As in, Here's the tonality in which you say this amount of price points and make them take the pay in full. That tonality would only work in a very specific scenario, but it's just a little feel good metal that you can keep. That's how I think about Instagram. It's give them just the, the little tactics because people actually do dig that. And that's how you grow on that platform. I kind of, I got this tip from you. Don't play to the ego game, play to the platform. That's what people like on that platform. When it comes to YouTube, <clears throat> Also, hooks. I had to learn a lot. My editor's really good at that. So he gives me tips. He formats my videos. But um, I think YouTube is a platform that I like the most just because I'm more of a long-form guy. And I, like, enjoy doing that. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Twitter, you can be very free. I feel like in every platform, the content you think about and the content that should come out is different. In Twitter, it's not. The same content you think about is the one that comes out because it rewards kind of just top of mind, you know, things you're thinking about. So to me, it's the platform I get to be the least careful, is the most careless with. LinkedIn, if a good boss can see it, good to go. Instagram, feed people little tactics. And in YouTube, I feel like the best move is actually being yourself because I've tried to do the other you know, I tried to do the Mr. Beast things. I've tried to do the make it look really well. And I feel like it's very easy to lie on text, but it's very hard to lie on video. And if people listen to one podcast of me doing this thing, I can't lie to them all the time. So that's why in YouTube, I actually gave up and said, I'm going to just be myself. So those how that's how I think about those four platforms uh, right now. And the most fun one, it's actually YouTube. Because I get to do this podcast, I get to do the videos, and I get to explore themes that I wouldn't have the chance to explore. But YouTube, as Daniel Fazio once said, it's uh, you got to have some resources to play the game well. And I actually agree with that. It's like, what do you say? It's like Twitter for rich people? <laughs> Something like that. I totally like, agree. Like, I'm yeah, not going to have to make all my shorts myself. <laughs> That's so yeah, much it's too much. Yeah, it's yeah. too much. But, but yeah. Do you, that, do you use TikTok at all? Nah, I'm, I mean, I repost stuff there. I have like a thousand, two thousand followers. It's not a focus. I just copy and paste stuff or my assistant copies and pastes stuff. Yeah. It's good for, it's good for like B2C. It's like, it would be good for your clients, but not necessarily for some of your clients, but not necessarily you. Does that make sense? Like it's good for those very chill, just like, it's almost like you just got out, like you just got out of the bathroom and you just like turn on the camera and start talking like it's really good for like the unedited raw stuff, but it's really, it's all B2C stuff. So you really get like a lower level audience. So like what your fitness platform? coach, sorry. What platform did you say again? TikTok. Mm, mm. Like if you are a fitness coach, you could crush it, like absolutely crush it. Like, uh, but if you're like a business coach, not so much, unless you're like Harmozy and you just have like elite level of clout. <laughs> yeah. It's just a complete outlier. I actually stopped taking so much advice from the guy on videos. I believe uh, like a guru's best work will never be in video. It will always be written because written requires so much more thinking and depth. So I took the books 
I unfollowed, muted, and I'm not going to consume because I think the books are enough of what I need at the moment. Right now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like halfway through, through the noise. I, how, what you think of it? I'm, I, it's, I'm, I really like it. And it's what sparked the whole, like, uh, it's funny that he has the repurpose things for the platform kind of thing in the, in the, in the middle. I really like the lead magnet stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. It's a lot to, it's a lot to unpack. I, it's like almost a curse if you're an existing business owner, cause you get so much information. It's like, great. If you're like in startup mode and you can just kind of read offers back to back with leads and you have like two strategies go in, but when you already have a business, it makes you rethink your entire fucking life. <laughs> oh, let me, let me, let me 